What's going on everyone? My name is Kodomor and welcome back to Electronics Episode 9. In this episode, we are going to talk about a few of the basic tools and components that you should really have if you're thinking about getting into electronics. Now, not all of these are necessary, but a lot of them are going to be really, really nice to have, and none of these really cost a lot. So we already know that you're really going to want some batteries, resistors, and LEDs. But what else? Well, one great thing that's going to help you a ton and it's going to be super easy are battery holders. This is a battery holder for two AA batteries. Of course, they also sell 9 volt battery holders. They sell 4 and 6 AA battery holders. You can get a variety if you'd like. I have a ton of these two AA battery holders for some reason, and I also have a few 9 volt battery holders. They're great because they're going to hold your batteries for you and they provide you with wires that you can plug into stuff. The next tool is so simple and that is pliers. These are some tiny needle nose type pliers. They're really, really old. They have a wire cutter in the middle that doesn't work at all. If you're going to get a wire cutter, I highly recommend that you get a tool specifically for cutting and stripping wires. But these needle nose or any type of pliers really are going to help you out a lot. A lot of times you're going to have to try and get a wire into a tiny place that you can't just do with your hands. Pliers are a definite must have. Next we're going to talk about two very basic components and those are switches. There are all different types of switches. Here are three that I have. I have quite a few of each of these types. This is a really tiny switch. You can probably barely see it on this recording right here. These are called dip switches and they come tiny like this. They're, they also come eight or four in a row. They're really handy to have especially what, with what I'm going to show you in a little bit. Then I have a toggle switch here. These are really great for finished projects, having switches. And I also have a more tiny switch that I might also use for a few projects. I've even put some wires on the bottoms myself because it's easier to work with that way. But in general, a few switches are, of course, a must have. It doesn't really matter what type you get. They're usually not too expensive. So if you find a few cheap ones, you might want to pick them up and see if you like them or not. Next, we're going to take a look at something very similar, the push button. I have two types of push buttons. This is a, uh, a dip, or rather a flat mount, I believe. I could be completely wrong on that. Push button, it's very simple, just a really tiny button. These are probably my favorite to use when prototyping certain electronics. Buttons, again, are another must-have. This is a larger one. I put two wires on the bottom myself again. And this one's a bit bigger. This is something that I would use in a finished product or a finished project. So those are the real things that I just wanted to show you today. Except there's two more that are extremely important. In the last video, we created our circuit using just our hands and a few metal clips. And that is really inefficient. If we're gonna be pro if we're gonna be prototyping a bunch of projects, you are going to need, this is an absolute necessity, a couple, two to three at minimum, at least in my opinion, breadboards. This is a solderless breadboard. You are definitely going to want these. In the next video, I'm gonna explain how these breadboards work and how we can use them. But trust me right now, breadboards are a necessity. They allow us to prototype almost any electronic circuit that we want really, really easily. And along with the breadboard, which we're gonna learn about in the next tutorial, comes wires. Now, if you have the time and patience to strip a bunch of wires yourself, you can go ahead and do that. Or like me, if you're a bit lazy, you can go out online really cheap. You can buy a few, a few uh, pre-stripped wires like this or wires like this you might see with little caps on the end. Those make prototyping and sticking them into the breadboard really easy and you can create circuits very easily with some pre-cut wires and a breadboard. So I didn't go into any detail about any of these components or tools that I showed you today. I just wanted to get you the ones that I really think that you should have. And if you had to choose only two of these to have, it's definitely the breadboard and wires. You need to have those. So that just about does it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to learn all about these breadboards and how we can make circuits with them. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.